Hello, my name is Melly. My pronouns are she, her. In this video, I'm going to show you how to download uh, and install the Triceratops plugin for Grasshopper, as well as how to start using the example website that's included in the download. And so this video is going to start at foodforrhino.com, uh, where I searched for the Triceratops plugin. And on the project page, um, I'm just going to scroll down, and today I'm going to use version 0.3.1 for Grasshopper 6 on Windows. And to download this, you can just click the download button. Um, I've already downloaded it. And so I'm going to go to my downloads folder. And to make it easier to find, I'm going to copy and paste this into my the, zip, the downloaded zip file into my documents folder. And then right click and extract it. And so now I have a new folder, the Triceratops folder. If I open it, um, I can see there are, uh, there's two parts here. There's the Triceratops GHA, which we'll use to install the plugin. Um, and then there's also this examples folder, which I'll show you how to use. Um, so first we will install the plugin. Um, and so in order to do that, we need to open up Rhino. And then also open up Grasshopper. And then, uh, like like many Grasshopper plugins, to install it within Grasshopper, you go to File, Special Folders, Components Folder, and then. You can see here there's a number of other GHA files, which are other plugins I downloaded. Um, so what I'm going to do is just simply uh, copy and paste the triceratops.ghA file uh, into, into this folder. Um, and I already had a version, so I just replaced it. Um, and then one thing that you want to do is uh, right click on the triceratops GHA and go to properties and then check this unblock um, toggle here, and then press OK. Uh, OK, then you can close that folder. Um, and then you actually need to restart Rhino and Grasshopper in order to uh, properly load Triceratops. So I'm just going to close these out. Then go to my search bar. Uh, start typing in Rhino, and rather than just opening Rhino, I'm, go I'm going to right-click and run Rhino as administrator. And uh, this actually, it's not uh, required for Triceratops, but there is one feature which is nice, which is um, a, a local server uh, to host your website, and um, that can only be used in administra uh, administrator mode. And OK, so I have Rhino open. And I'm going to open up Grasshopper by typing Grasshopper into the command line. And now I can see that in the toolbar in Grasshopper, I have a Triceratops tab and I can see all of the components here. And in this tutorial, I'm not going to show you how to use these different components. I'm just going to show you how to uh, use some of the example uh, files that were included in the download. So if, uh, if we go back to our Triceratops folder, um, you can now open the examples folder, and you can see there's Rhino and Grasshopper file pairs, which work together. Uh, and so we're going to start by uh, looking at this chair um, example. So in Rhino, just click and open the chair.3dm. And then you can see it loads this 3D model of a mid-century chair. And then in Grasshopper, click File, Open Document, 
open the care.gh file. And this is the uh, definition that's um, creating, taking the chair geometry, um, and it's so it's it's loading it from Rhino, and it's compiling it into a scene here, and then first it's serializing that scene, and then saving that scene as a JSON file called chair.json. Um, and it's doing so at a path that's relative to the grasshopper file. And so um, if you go all the way up to the upper left, you'll see this component here called relative path. Um, we'll find the location of the grasshopper file. And uh, it will um, allow you to save uh, files like this JSON to, to a location relative to it. Um, and so we are, um, yeah, so just to demonstrate how this works, uh, so you can click this button here and you'll see the components flash. They're actually saving this chair.json and they're saving it in, in this location, which is at www slash assets. So if we go back to our example folder, We'll see there's a folder in here called www, which th this is the uh, example website. So if you open this, you'll see um, it looks like a website. There's an index.html, a, a JavaScript folder, and then this is the assets folder, and this is where the chair.json file actually got stored. And so this is the file that will be loaded into the website, uh, and it contains the, the 3.js scene um, of, of the chair. And uh, so a great way to view this website is um, right here, which in this section, uh, you can serve your website using this component, which is an HTTP server, um, which will serve your website locally. And so this is also using rel the relative path component uh, and then serving the website at this location, which is our example website. And so in order to start the website, you just toggle this to true and it will automatically open uh, your website in the browser. Um, and so you can see here, uh, this is uh, actually, so it's not the chair. So it's not that uh, geometry that we wanted to view. Um, and that's because all this component does is serve whatever website is within this folder. And so we actually, um, for the example website, we have to go to, and, and make sure we're loading the right file. So um, you can see this JavaScript folder here. Um, there's a few files related to 3.js, uh, but then there's also this app.js, which is where um, all the JavaScript for our example website lives. and so you can just open this with uh, your favorite text editor. I'm going to use Atom. And then once it loads, you'll see here, uh, this is the JavaScript file that controls the website. And so it does a number of things. Um, it creates a 3.js scene um, and then adds it to our DOM. And then it also uh, loads the, the JSON that we created um, and uh, loads it into, into the 3.js canvas. And uh, you'll see here that um, this is actually the file that it's going to load. Um, and so right now it's loading house.json. Uh, so if you just change this to whatever file you do want to load from the assets folder, like chair.json, um, and then you save, and then go back to your website, uh, and then you refresh it. Um, so it doesn't actually load the, the chair file. So um, what you actually need to do is your browser probably um, 
caches this um, model and or or saves the the fact that you're loading the house model um, and so you need to disable cache and you can do that by uh, clicking Control shift i in chrome if you're using chrome um, and then if you go to the network tab here within the dev tools um, you can click disable cache and that will ensure that when you refresh your page it loads um, the most recent um, model as specified within within your JavaScript file. Um, and so now we can see we have our chair here. And so let's say you're developing in Triceratops and Grasshopper uh, and now you want to uh, update your model and see essentially see how um, how it looks in 3js and so I'm gonna make some arbitrary uh, changes to, to this model just to um, just as an example I'm gonna move those I'm gonna make uh, let's see I'm gonna make one change within grasshopper as well um, I will uh, change, or I'll add the color swatch to the chair of uh, red, just so it changes the color of the chair. And then I'm going to go here to where we serialize and save, and I'm just going to click this button. And uh, so this saved out a new chair.json, so I can confirm that by going back to my website folder, going to assets, and then seeing that uh, there's this chair uh, JSON, which is, which is newer, um, which was just saved. And so now when I go back to my website and I refresh, what it will do is load uh, that new um, chair file and give you the updated version. Uh, so that's a good um, sequence for how you can uh, work with Triceratops is you can uh, edit within Rhino and Grasshopper. Uh, you can click this button here and then you go back to your website and refresh the page. Uh, and, and of course you can do the split screen so you can uh, put your website on one side. Uh, which makes it a little easier to work. Okay, and then, uh, so the last thing that I'm going to show you is how to start uh, developing your website. Uh, so let's say um, this website is nice. It lets you see the 3JS scene, this example website. Um, and let me close this. And the challenges that, um, or, or, but it's, it's just a basic scene. So um, it's the, the entire page. And if you're showing, for instance, a project or 3D model on your website, you might want it just to exist in a window. Uh, and so you can start working with this website. Um, and then, so you can start working with the index.html. So I'm gonna open this again with Adam. And so um, this is an index.html, it has some styling in, in here as well. Um, and the way to get started is that, um, so this container here, this is where the 3JS canvas actually um, gets placed. And so if I want to, for instance, um, change the, the size of the canvas, um, I can just style it differently. So going to do that by going up here to the uh, styling section and change my CSS to change the container 
um, to be 400 pixels by 400 pixels. And I'm just going to give it a small margin as well. And then when I go back and reload my page, you'll see that now my model is, is just in this small, um, small box here. And you can also notice the camera doesn't start in the place you want uh, necessarily. So you can, for instance, keep on customizing and go back to your, um, go back to your JavaScript file. And for instance, um, let's see, you can change the camera position in order to get the camera to start from where you want um, and, and just keep working from there. And yeah, and then, then you can work and integrate this container uh, into your website and include, include the app.js um, portion as well. Uh, and you can just start developing your, um, your website from there. And then this could, so this could be a good way to show off your, um, your projects and your 3D models, whatever you're working on. Okay, well, I will conclude there. Um, in future tutorials, I will show how to actually uh, set up your model and use Triceratops um, in order to create your model, but this should get you started using the example files and, and playing around with the example files um, that are included with the Triceratops download. And thanks for listening.